Hiya, right, today I'm going to talk you through um, elliptical arches, um, but the easy way of doing it. Um, because there's geometry involved and it can be quite daunting. Um, I'll just show you. I mean, that one there, you can see, you know, there's a lot to do, a lot going on there. And the same as that one there. Now they're they're both five centered arches. There's, there's two types of elliptical arch. There may be more than one in our tour. And that's the five centered arch and the three centered arch. Uh, we won't be doing the five centered arch because it's just too much to show. And I would probably only ever use that uh, if I was doing some gauge brickwork or something. And that's never going to happen. Um, the three centered arch will get you where you want to be. Um, it's simply enough to do. You can form the ellipse um, with trammels uh, or even a piece of string and it, and it does give you good shape, it does work and it is a true ellipse. The three centred arch is uh, actually called a pseudo ellipse, it's, it's, it's known as not being a, a true ellipse but it, it, it is, it looks fine. <coughs> um, <coughs> excuse me. The problem with using the string is it forms the, the shape you want but it doesn't give us as bricklayers the spring, the the the, uh, the, the springing point, uh, and the the point where the two arches meet, you can form you form it with a string, and then you've got to go back to geometry to find out all your points. Um, so you might as well just start off with geometry in the first place. Right, geometry. I mean, bricklayers don't use it no more, do they? Um, at school, all them years ago, I was all right at school. Maths, mate, was my worst subject. I was hopeless at it. Um, I couldn't do my tables. Uh, especially in odd numbers, nine times table, forget it, you know, that's not a lot of good for a bricklayer, is it? Um, but it, it turned out later, I found out, and there's only about 6% of us in the world like this, um, of mathematically dyslexic, and there is a word for it, it's dyscalculia, dyscalculia. Um, so yeah, just one of the things, I'm a bit dyslexic on the, uh, on the writing side of things as well, but you know, nothing that serious, it's just some things I just can't retain, and that's just something you're born with isn't it so there was a bit of a debate on I'll just go this quickly there was a bit of a debate on the uh, Facebook group uh, a little while back uh, about these tapes uh, this is an old one but they're the uh, the brick line tapes the Fisco brick line tapes uh, you know people saying well you know if you've got to use one of them you're not a bricklayer and all this nonsense well I can't agree with that especially for me that these have been a godsend um, you know, all my gate, all my uh, profiles are gauged out, um, other than my Blake's, because generally I'm an extension, so we have to make the gauge up to suit the house. Um, I've got a gauge rod made up because it's easier than holding the tape. But for, for setting out, um, you know, bricks, uh, uh, how many bricks in the wall and where they go, it's got to be quicker than using the tape. And I mean, you know, if you're that clever, and you know, good luck to you, that you can re read your nine times table. 42 times down a wall or something um good luck to you but it's all here for you and i think these have been a great advance so yeah and you know just a standard tape if you look here one foot this is upside down but you get the, on the one foot bit and the uh 16 inches it's marked and why is it marked it's marked for carpenters for their stud centers you know so they've been doing this for years and years and years uh They've been helping carpenters out, so now they're helping bricklayers out. Oh, there's something else here. Where is it? Uh, you know, the Americans have these rules. Yeah, I think they've got it on here as well. Yeah, oh, look, the 16 inch stud centre is highlighted. And this is a bricklaying tape, and this is American bricklaying tape. If you look, there's a lot of marks on it. Basically, you can bump and grind. It doesn't work in the UK because it's for the American brick sizes, and they've got a lot of them. Um, but yeah, you just, you know, if you bricks number two, then you just carry on number two all the way up. But I bought it when I was in America. Um, and I've, yeah, I've also got this, um, which is a gauge rod. And it's a folding gauge rod, you know, it's great. Why think when something else will think for you? Um, right, I was gonna say, yeah, these are um, elliptical arches. Are you gonna do use them? Anyone wanna use them? Well, Maybe not, I don't know. But 
I've used them a lot, uh, but many years ago when we used to build them um, decorative fireplaces, um, they're, they're the right shape to, to put in a brickwork fireplace, you know, if, it was, if it's got a bit of width, and they look good. So, uh, anyway, um, yeah, let's go in and I'll, we'll, we'll draw, I think I've got like three, three ways I'll show you, which is simple. Uh, right, um, semi-elliptical arch, three-centered arch. Uh, like I did say earlier, there's, there's so many ways of doing it. Um, I'm going to quickly go through two easy ways just to prep you up a bit for the old one. Uh, right, so first of all, you do your baseline, this baseline here, and you divide it into one, two, three, right? And then put your compass there. If, if you're doing this um, full size, which you would be, um, just make a trammel up, um, a length of baton, draw a line down the middle of it, um, drill a hole to put a nail through, um, which you know, a bit like at this point, uh, and then another hole big enough to take a pencil, so you can do it all like that. It's all quite easy. Um, so first of all, we need to find the centre. So describe that. I have already done it. I'm just doing it to outline it a bit. Um, and then that one, I had a bit of drama yesterday because I went to do it yesterday and um, I bought some uh, a bit of large set of compasses from uh, eBay and I tried to use it, it was like using two lumps of spaghetti, bloody hopeless. Um, so that didn't work, so we're doing it like this. Right, so you scribe that in, we've got the centre line there, give yourself the centre line, okay? Right, from this point to this point, no, that's wrong. Start again. Next procedure. From this point to that point, we need to draw a line. I've put the wrong pen up there. Let me get the right pen so it's clear. Just trying to make it stand out. I don't know how these pencil lines are going to come out in this light on the GoPro. So where I can highlight it, I will. Right. There, and we'll do the other side. Not that accurate, but it's good enough what I'm trying to show you. Right, we got that. Now, from there to there, that's the radius, we're going to scribe an arc to that point there. That's where the two arcs meet. Same other side. This pin's not really doing it, is it? But anyway, it's the best I've got. Right, that's that bit, and then that is the centre for the big arc. And that is obviously this distance from there to there. Get the general idea this whole thing's moved uh, yeah so that, that's how you do your three centered arch i'm going to take this pen out now put a pencil in it's not working okay right um arch number two this one's done by dividing this baseline into four one two three four Right, don't really need a centre line for this one, we just need this point here. So what we do, from the first quarter in, let's try and make a better job of this than I did the last one. Scribe that arc to there. And then, quarter in from the other side, we do the same. Right. 
Next we'll do the same as we did last time. We strike this line through. So, like I said, I'm not too accurate here, but just to show you how it's done. That line then we'll do the other side. This bit of door off of Mick yesterday, he's thrown it out. He's having some work done in his house. He thinks I'm taking his rubbish away, but I'm back in his garden later. <laughs> Where was I? Right. Now, we need this arc here, the first arc, which comes from that point there. There. And there, so where the two arcs meet. Now this one's going to be a bit awkward. Same again, we need this distance from that point to there. Right, that's how you do an electrical arch. <clears throat> now, there's a problem. Anyone notice what the problem is? No? They're no good to us. I'm just doing this just to show you get into the rhythm of things, how we, you know, how you sort of scribe them in and that. We, this measurement here from there to there, we are dictated that by doing it this way. And that's no good to us, because we got, well, that's the intradoss, all right, the extra doss will be out here. We got courses of brickwork here, and the top of that arch has got to hit courses. So we need to work backwards. We need to work from the brickwork geometrically uh, to get this arch. So this don't work. Now, if you ain't bothered and you don't mind a split or something over there, you never know it's gonna work. This is the easy way. Um, now the next way is quite difficult, but it's is, it is the proper way to do it. And, and there is no easier way, I don't think so. Um, Rob Songer done one of these a while back, uh, and he used a method, but I couldn't really see it. it these lines are very fine on that. Um, so I, I don't know if I'm using the same method as he did. Uh, if I am Rob, I'm not nicking your work. It's just the only way I know how to do it. I don't go around uh, pinching other people's work, but. Yeah, but have a look at Rob's as well. You might be able to see it better than me. So yeah, we'll get on with a difficult one. Right. The only way to do it really, this is, this is the simplest way I can find to do it. Right. Start off, you've got your baseline. It's baseline and the center. A, C and B. Now we want our rise, where our rise is going to be. And our rise, I just guessed it, it doesn't matter, because we've got to work to what we've got. So we've got a rise there, which is that point there, which I'm going to call E. Right. We need to draw a radius um, from A to C. to give us what we will call F. Right, I'm trying to make a hash of this, which you already have. Just in a bit. Right, a few things these, aren't they? Right. I need to draw that up first. There. Right. I can do that with the smaller one now. From we'll call that F. Let's write it down. That's F. 
and then from E to F Tell you what I haven't done, which is a mistake. E to A, we need to draw that in. Should have done that first. So e to A, we strike a straight line. We need this. Sorry about that. This is very important. We need that line there. And then from E to F which is our radius we draw this arc there which gives us G now we need to uh, where was I right we, we need to bisect this line we need to find the centre from there to there, we need to find that centre. So, uh, I don't know if these are going to be big enough. Yeah. As long as you keep it the same, doesn't matter where it goes. Oh, I'm out of my... Ah. Not there. Not there. Not there. Out oh, there, and then that, that's bisected that line, that's give us the centre. So we can draw that line in there from there to there. Which now gives us uh, this point there which is the centre of the first arch and this point here which is the centre of the uh, the bulk of it, the top of it now let's draw that in I can to remember this myself right, uh, do that with this one <coughs> right, now the small arch small portion of it there and then the bulk of it is from this point to that point same as all the others we've done but we're controlling it because we're giving them the measurements they're not giving us the measurements There it is. You can um, to get the other side. Um, an easy way to do that is put that there. It's coming a bit. Yeah. Let's draw this circle here moved it's a bit around the wrong way oh, if you draw that right the way around to there and you can put your line this side from there to there Just do the same as what we did on the other side. You've got that point there. Pencil's coming out of the bulb. Crap tools. What's good about crap tools? Nothing. So that. And that's the full arch, that's it. And we've dictated that space. 
Um, I'll just extend that a little bit on this side because what you got there, just for a see it. This is the intrados, right? This is the inside of the arch. So now you've got to there 215 mil if you're doing metric. So it's the same thing if you to get the extra dos, the outside of it, here at that point again. Uh, I don't think we, I don't think this is going to be big enough. But, uh, let's have a look. I'll manage it. That's the same. This is the top of the arch. Silly idiot. Right. That's the top of the arch. And then top of the small arc is there. So <coughs> that's your brickwork badly done, yeah? And that's how you do it. Hope that was helpful. Um fixed bricks come in handy. Don't think there's much more to tell you on that really. Um, obviously when you're setting out your brickwork that's that's the center of the joint this is where it changes and so you have to work your brickwork out from there you've got a key brick there uh, work your bricks out to there and what you do with a, a, a pair of dividers and you just have to keep traversing till you get it right you can be lucky you can get it in the first couple of hits yeah, well, it can take half hour or so keep messing about them, the bigger the arch, the harder it is. Um, but yeah, and then you just, everything, you know, these ones just span from there, and these ones from here. Loads of cutting, good luck with that. Thank you. Well, I hope that um, video was helpful. Um, I'm not really geared up for doing this technical drawing. I haven't got the equipment for it really to do it properly. Would be nice, but um, I don't think I'll be doing any more. I mean, I've showed you the, uh, jack arch and then gone straight onto the uh, three centered arch oh, I don't think I mentioned there's actually uh, you can do it with seven uh, seven centers I think four as well there's there's so many ways of doing it with the lips um, but yeah that last one I showed you that's all you need um, right I'm going on holiday um, uh, beginning of next week so I don't think I don't think I'll be posting anything up for about a month um, I don't normally go to Spain in August the only reason I'm going is that, um, where am I going? Oh yeah, because my wife, um, her job's school related now, so we can only get away on the holidays. And really, August is a really bad time to go to Spain. Um, it's too hot, there's too many people, all the Spanish on holiday. Um, normally when I used to go out there, it would be after Christmas for you know a few months, but we can't do that now for other certain reasons. <coughs> and I'll do a bit of work. Um, and I, I would this August um, jump in with a couple of mates and I'd just do a bit, just something to do in it. Uh, but I'm only there for three weeks. And no one works in Spain in August really. Spanish don't, like everything shuts down. A few Eastern Europeans do. So yeah, uh, unless something really out of the blue um, occurs, worth filming, I will. But otherwise I'm going on holiday, so yeah. You enjoy August as well, you lot. Take it easy. I think we've got another heat wave coming, so um, put that old sunblock on. See you later.